Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods this morning. Hope everybody's doing great on this Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I know we're all feeling a little bit heavier. Yeah, and I know you still got leftovers in the fridge. I still have some of the big sub. I'm going to polish that sucker off today as we get ready for game day tomorrow. Now, this is going to be kind of an easy day for me today because normally on Saturday, I'm running to go to BJ's and get my meats and go to town gourmet and get my sub, you know, and get everything together for game day tomorrow. Today, I don't have all that to do. I've got some work to do in the workshop because we have some plaques and things that we need to do uh, for you guys as well. And some early Christmas stuff that we have that need to go out. And, uh, but, but for the most part, it's going to be an easy day. We'll have our zoom in phone call at uh, five o'clock today. As always, and we'll roll right on to prime time and game time. We'll be doing their live stream at 7 o'clock tonight. Always some great insight, although the mailman won't have to do a prediction tonight on the Cowboys. So the question now is, okay, the Cowboys, when you looked at the beginning of the season, as we went through the whole offseason, and listening to the talking heads that were telling us it's going to be misery that the Giants could be, you know, the second best team in the division, that the Cowboys just don't have the talent or the firepower and everything else to compete, that we don't have the wide receivers, that Zeke Elliott is done. Um, you know, we don't have Randy Gregory, that so many things, and of course we still had Mike McCarthy, that so many things that they predicted that were going to happen didn't actually happen. Cowboys right now have the third best record in the conference, in the NFC. And they have hope of being able to move further ahead. If the Minnesota Vikings have a hiccup, then all of a sudden you've got the tiebreaker with them. And the Eagles, they have not been as good the last couple of weeks. I don't want to hear, you know, it's so funny to me. It is so comical to me when we end up beating Minnesota, uh, Minnesota's frauds. We end up beating a division rival in the Giants and stuff, and they're like, oh, that wasn't good enough. You know, you're still not a good team. But you have supposedly the best team in football survive in the last second getting a score against the Colts with a coach who's only coaching his second game at any level. They're great. They're great. Oh, and by the way, they lost to the left hands up the week before. Be that as it may. The Cowboys get a mini buy. They get a chance to catch their breath. And they get a chance to maybe make a major move going forward in two areas. I call him the unicorn. James Washington. And to me, this is still... The biggest worry I have on the team right now is still is the wide receiver core. CD is playing great. CD, you know, as many times we've talked about the lack of 100-yard games, the last two or three weeks he's had 100-yard-plus games. And you see him being a little tougher, a little bit more clutch than you've seen before, a little bit more physical. And you're seeing now Michael Gallup really begin to get his legs underneath of him. And you look at those two and say, okay, those two guys, they're good. They're good. Okay. They're credible. But beyond that, between Noah Brown, between um, Jalen Tolbert, and so on down the line, you don't have a lot of confidence in them. If something happens to C.D. Lamb or, or um, Michael Gallup, we're in deep shit at wide receiver. So this is where James Washington, um, we've been hearing how close he's been. We've been hearing how close he's been, it seems like, for two months. He should have the practice window open, I would think, maybe this week coming up. Because it's now or never. It's now or never. If he is not ready to go now, 
then there's there's no point in keeping him. And maybe that will be the boost. Maybe that'll be the third wide receiver. Maybe that'll be a guy that if there is an injury, we can count on. There's still, of course, Odell out there. But, you know, we don't know if he's going to be ready to play. And if he's going to be like Michael Gallup, he's going to have a learning curve that he's got to use to, you know, learn the playbook and so on to get on the page with the Cowboys. And, of course, you don't know how well that knee is ready to go ahead and go. So that is the big area of concern. Now, an interesting thing out there, I don't think that we were one of the teams that called, but Gronkowski has been getting phone calls from teams that are trying to make a playoff run that are looking to add a tight end and gauging his interest. No word that he's had any interest or not. But there are teams out there that are trying to make moves. Interestingly enough, it's still crazy, but there is still a possibility that we could have four teams from our division go to the playoffs. With the 49ers win last week, they are now in the lead in their division. So right now, you're looking at um, the Seattle Seahawks or the Commanders, the Seahawks that are at 6-4, and four, the Commanders that are at 6-5, and five, basically in the position to try and get that eighth, excuse me, seventh seed. Right now, the Seahawks are there. They could actually sneak up in there and get that spot. Um, it is possible, and that would be something we've never seen before. I mean, I think we got to say the Cardinals at four and seven, they don't have a chance at it. Uh, the Rams at three and seven, they don't have a chance at it. The Lions at four and seven, the Packers at four and seven, uh, the Bears three and eight. They, you're not looking at that. The Falcons, of course, and this is one of the teams that you look at and say that would be one that would be an outside horse if the Falcons can beat Washington then that really hurts Washington's chance because then they're 6-6 six and six and would own a tiebreaker. But if Washington beats the Falcons, that's a major step closer uh, to getting there. So basically, that's it. Now, the question will be is, will the Giants slip out of there? And a lot of people are already saying, oh, they probably won't. But I, I, don't, I actually don't believe that. If the Giants, here's the thing. If the Giants start to fall, if they start to fall, they've got a free fall completely on out of it. They basically have to have the polar opposite of the season they had for the first half. They basically going to have to lose on out because, again, it's either going to be Seattle or the Giants. And right now they're still ahead of Seattle. So we'll see what happens, But which would mean that Washington is taking basically the Giants' spot. Here's the thing that's crazy is – um, Tyler Smith, who's got about 10 penalties, who's rated out above average as an offensive tackle as a rookie, has struggled a little bit you know, the last couple of games as the season has worn on, but is still playing really, really well, is that the Cowboys may be able to move him to guard, and we've already seen them actually do that one game uh, against Minnesota. If they can insert Tyron Smith, and Tyron Smith is the Tyron Smith of the beginning of the season last year, then all of a sudden this team is in really great shape to be able to run the football going down when the weather turns and going to the playoffs, protect Dak Prescott, and really be something special. The Cowboys offense, and I know people still don't believe in Dak Prescott, has done a complete 180. Right now, we went from being the 27th scoring offense to right now in the sixth scoring offense position. We've scored that many more points than when we had Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, it was 22.6 points a game. It's 33.8 right now. Now, I just want to go back to one thing here because – this is the thing I love. I love the, the thing about the internet is once it happens and it's on the internet, it's always on the internet. There's nothing out there that you can't find. If you look hard enough, you can find anything and everything about anyone. And you can cut and dice and make anybody look like an asshole. But I just want to go back to week one. 
seriousness. Oh, with this in all issue. seriousness, first of all, I'm mad that you asked the question because it almost took my thunder away. The season is over. <laughs> I mean, one game in. How many times do I have to say this, Dan Olowski? How many times do I have to say this, playmaker? Just wait. <laughs> Don't wait. Just be patient. It's coming. The only bad part about all of this is that I like a little suspense. I mean, this is television. I'm looking for theater. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not thinking that, you know, week one, I mean, damn, the die has been cast and it's over. But what other decision are we to come to? First of all, Dak Prescott looked like garbage prior to getting injured, and I don't wish injury on anybody, right. so I'm right. very well, sad we know, that we know, he's we know, injured. We know that. You know, I, I know. You know, I, I hope I want him to get better, yeah. you know, as quick as he possibly can. But, I mean, my Lord, he wasn't looking good to begin with. So now <laughs> you got your quarterback down. You mm -hmm. got a number one receiver that ain't really a number one yet. We got to be convinced that he is. You got a running back that's had slippage over the last two years, and you try to figure out what you're going to do with him. And by the way, you got a number one. Again, your number one receiver was gone. Amari Cooper's gone. Cedric Wilson's no scrub. He's gone. I'm just looking at this squad, and I'm saying, wait a minute. You had issues to begin with, which I told y'all about. Not that y'all didn't know, but y'all wanted to reiterate it to y'all. <laughs> y'all knew they had issues coming into the season offensively. We know Michael Parsons that dude. Ladies he and gentlemen, dude, I boy. think that he got the chance. I think that he has he the chance to be the next Lawrence Taylor. That's how high, I mean, Michael Parsons yeah. is the truth and a half. That brother is something. The only reason that I kind of root for the Cowboys. He, 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 he is screen. something he special. Off, Without Stop. question, he is something special. No doubt about it. And their defense isn't bad, and obviously they did a good job for the most part against Tampa Bay last night. I mean, with the exception of the touchdown to Evans, I mean, the defense pretty LG You had to start off with four field goals. They kept you out of the end zone on several occasions, even though you were in that red zone area threatening the score. But in the end, what it comes down to is this. Your number one receiver is gone. Your number three receiver is gone. Your number two, who's become a number one, we don't know if he's ready to be a number one. Your running back's a question mark. And now your star quarterback is down for six to eight weeks. Now, when you look at the NFC East, Giants, Com Commanders, Eagles, we get all of that, so you got a chance. But in the grand scheme of things, ain't nobody think about the Cowboys. Season's over, bro. Season's over right now. So, 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 so first you say ain't no season first. over, and then you come back and say in the grand scheme, no, no, you got no. a chance. No, no, I said people, people lay, people, lay people. on one side of the line I am, I and am. stay I'm on it, I am. I'm just saying other people are going to pick okay. up the NFC least. I'm not. It's a wrap. You will not be playing a postseason game. Not, not, not that I'm used to this, this mm -hmm. kind of start when I play. But, but, but what you do when something like this does happen mm -hmm. is, okay, the season is not over. But right now, the goals change for the season. Before the goals were, let's win the division. You know, let's get in as win division with best team in division, go win the division. Mm -hmm. Do go win the division. Now, the Dallas Cowboys, all they have to do, they're thinking about surviving Dak's absence. That's what they got to do. Right. Survive that tax absence. Stephen A., you said it here a couple weeks ago. I shall lay this love upon you. You said, you know, that, that NFC just isn't, it, 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 it doesn't have a lot of kick to it. That whole NFC doesn't have a lot of kick mm. to it. I right. believe the Dallas Cowboys right. played the best team in the NFC. At least if we count week one, that the Dallas Cowboys played the mm -hmm. best team against the NFC. And we'll talk about Minnesota Vikings and my Kirk Cousins MVP. We'll get in that later on, too. All Thanks right. for watching ESPN. Interesting how the season is over. All right, well, I guess this is the reason why they actually play the game. And I've got to do a little bit more on this. Apparently, we're finding out that one of the teams that was calling Gronk, which makes sense because it seemed like they missed Dallas Goddard quite a bit, was the Eagles. All right, good people. I hope you're having a great, great Saturday. And I will, of course, see you guys soon. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.